The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the, a sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think I've told you this some years back. But on my bucket list is that the Seattle Mariners will one day go to the World Series. And you know, it's been a long time. Karen and I have had uh, season tickets since the very first day in 40 years. And they're celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. And by the looks of things, time is running out on me. Hopefully, at some point in time, they will go to the World Series. I used to hope that they would win the World Series. I'm just hoping they go to the World Series. You know, and there's been a lot of chances, a lot of good players over the years, a lot of good teams, but a lot of promises. And just they just seem to maybe get in the playoffs, but they don't have what it takes to get all the way. They don't live up to their potential. And the, that is the interesting thing, that the pro sports are littered with athletes who never panned out, even though they appeared to have incredible God-given talents, while others, almost no one thought would make it, have gone on to have stellar careers. The lesson here is that potential can only get someone so far. Someone once said, it wasn't Yogi Berra, but I think it was maybe one of the former Mariner managers that says, potential. Potential is a French word for you ain't done anything yet. <laughs> a willingness to do whatever it takes to succeed seems to be as important as talent. In today's Gospel from Matthew, we hear Jesus once again talking about the kingdom. This thing, the kingdom, that was incredibly difficult for his disciples to understand and wrap their heads around. And of course, it's sometimes hard for us to understand. Jesus does his best to unpack the meaning of the kingdom for them. He compares it to a treasure buried in a field and to a pearl of great price and to a net thrown into the sea collecting fish of every kind. And while these descriptions don't completely explain what the kingdom is, they do make one thing perfectly clear. 
God's kingdom is something precious and should be desired above everything else. It should be number one on our bucket list. I guess that really should, shouldn't surprise us. After all, we pray the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every time we pray the Our Father, yet do we ever stop and think about how that kingdom will come about? Those words might sound like we are simply encouraging God to do what he wants, that it's all up to him, and that we are simply on the sidelines rooting him on. But the very next line in the prayer is, thy will be done. And that should tell us something. You see, God's kingdom comes about when God's will is being done, and God's will is being done in its fullness sense when God does his part, which he always does, and when we do our I, ours, when we live up to our potential. And that's when things get a little tricky. The truth is, it's simpler and easier for us to believe that we all have to do, all we have to do is ask God to bring about the world he wants and then leave it to him. After all, he created this world. He knows what he wants it to be. And he has the power to bring it about. We might say, our job is simply to say we're on board with what God wants and then get out of his way. Or is it? I think you know the answer. The kingdom won't simply come about by praying for it. The kingdom comes about and is made more visible when we are willing to work toward bringing it about. It's not going to come solely from the outside. It's going to come through us with God's help, of course, through our individual acts of kindness, mercy, compassion, generosity, and love. And that comes from the inside of us. And King Solomon seems to have understood that at some level. In our first reading from the first book of Kings, we heard God telling Solomon that he would give him whatever he asked for. Imagine that. Anything he wants. What would you ask for? I would have to think about that long and hard. But Solomon then does something quite remarkable. He asks for understanding, not for power and fame or a larger army. He wants to be a good leader of his people, and he knows that will, that will only be possible if he ha has what it takes on the inside. It is these two things together, a sincere desire to change on the inside and a willingness to put those changes to good use on behalf of others. That is what will bring about the kingdom that God wants. God doesn't want to do it on his own. He wants our help. And that's how we show that we love God. Put another way, it's both our God-given potential and our hard work that will build up the kingdom. The kingdom that not only exists in heaven, but also here on earth. We can't simply pray for the world to be a certain way and then refuse to do whatever it takes to help bring it about and make it more visible. No, we must be willing to pray earnest, sincerely to God to change us on the inside and be willing to use those changes in us to change the world on the outside. God's kingdom in heaven and earth is a precious thing. We should not forget that. As I said, number one on the book bucket list. But he also doesn't want us to forget that we play a critical role in bringing it about. And so each time that we say our Father 
and utter the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let's be sure not to hear those words simply as a, as a plea to God, but also as a challenge and promise from us to not let our God-given potential go to waste. Those countless blessings and gifts he bestows upon us continuously. Rather, let us combine the good in us with a sincere heart like Solomon and a willingness to do whatever it takes to make the kingdom, which is Jesus himself, more visible each and every day. That sounds like a winning combination to me.